Hello and welcome to another Stamp with Amy K Facebook Live video. And today I'm going to show you a card that I made with the Quiet Meadow Stamp Set Bundle, which is one of the bundles that is in the annual catalog from Stampin' Up. And um, like I said, it's just a fun little card, uh, fairly simple to make. I did do some sort of extending on the tag a little bit, um, but that's all. I mean, it's a pretty, pretty basic card, pretty simple. Hey, Rosie, and I can see comments today. I'm so excited. Facebook got rid of, there was a huge thing that was covering all your comments and I can see them now today. So yay, Debbie's here and Karen as well. Thanks for joining today. I appreciate you being here. So, all right, so let's um, get going and we'll chat a little bit about the card and um, the project here. So this is what we're gonna be making today. And I made just a couple little tags um, for people. Hey, Barbara, thanks for joining. For anyone who has seen the upcoming um, Stampin' Up! catalog, the, the new mini catalog, um, I did a little casing out of the catalog. I, there's a card that's made with a whole different bundle in there, but it's a very similar design and I totally swiped it because I loved it. So, <laughs> hey, Elise, thanks for joining. And Rosie is here as well. So yes, yes. And Flo, thanks for joining. So, all right, so that, this is what we're making today. So the Quiet Meadow Stamp Set Bundle is a good one. Um, it's got some pretty flower images in it, some good sentiments in it, um, some kind of good background uh, images in it as well. Hey, Julie, thanks for joining. And Gail, I see you're here as well. So love those tags too. Yeah, it's a good tag set. Um, this is the Meadow Dyes, and they coordinate with the um, Quiet Meadow stamp set. They actually, what's funny about this bundle is they actually don't cut any of the images out. They cut, this die will cut the sentiments out, um, but the rest of it, oh, and this one, little tag one cuts out the little love. Um, but the rest of it, actually, these are all just like kind of accessory pieces to it. So it's a really good die set um, and just really fun to use. The one thing that I did find out, and um, don't be embarrassed because, well, I was embarrassed because <laughs> I couldn't figure out what these dies did. And I know I talked about these in another video that I did, but I had no idea what these were. They look like little corn cobs to me, and I couldn't imagine why we would need corn cobs <laughs> in this die set but what it actually is is the flower center for that flower so you can cut out several flower centers and stick it you know if you cut out a bunch of flowers so that is what those little things are <laughs> it, it took me a long time to figure that out and i didn't want you all to be embarrassed like i was so <laughs> all right so that is the die set this is the quiet meadow stamp set the other thing that we used here um, was the tailor-made tags dies, and this is a separate die. Hey, Denise from Pennsylvania, thanks for joining. So this is a separate set of dies. They're not in a bundle with anything. They're just available in the catalog in the die section from Stampin' Up. And um, this is the die that we used, which is the largest one today. And after I got things all done and kind of basically laid out and put together, I decided that I didn't think the tags were long enough. So I did a little bit, um, a little bit of extra trimming and I'll show you how I did that to make the tag a little bit longer. So hey Danette, thanks for joining. I'm glad it wasn't just me that couldn't figure out what in the world those were for because I looked at it for the longest time and I'm like, I got nothing. <laughs> so it took me a minute. So all right, let's get rolling on the card. Oh, oh, before uh, I get going on the card, the Stampin' Up! retiring sale is actually going on now. Sorry, I'm pulling my one paper out that I need to chat with you about. Um, their retiring sale is going on now. Well, that's not what we're talking about now. <laughs> so um, the anything retiring from the January to June mini catalog actually ends tomorrow. So all the retiring items are while supplies last and it ends tomorrow. So if there are things you haven't picked up, make sure, sure that you um, get those things ordered soon because they are going to be going away tomorrow. Um, starting on... Uh, July the 1st, we have the Designer Series paper sale going on from Stampin' Up! So you're going to save 15% on these nine packs of pretty Designer Series papers. And they're really good ones. I mean, they're all kind of the, the I mean, the really good ones out of the, the annual catalog. So um, take a minute, go take a peek at it. The details are posted on my blog, which is stampwithamyk.com. And um, starting on July 1st, these will be on sale for 15% off, and they will be on sale for the entire month of July, and it ends on August 2nd. So hey, Jamie, I don't know if I should spoil your surprise. I probably shouldn't. I'll let you spoil your surprise. <laughs> I've already shared it enough. So um, one last thing, I do have double running shoe reward points going on right now for anyone that places an order with me. Um, through July 2nd, you're going to get double points on your order. So yay, bonus for that. Let me know if you have any questions about that. My running shoe reward points are my um, customer ordering uh, 
bonus, basically. You earn points towards free products from Stampin' Up! from me. All right, so let's get going and start putting this card together. So I've got a thick basic white card base um, that I have cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. Four and a quarter by five, four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half is what I'm trying to say. And then I have a piece of the Misty Moonlight Designer Series paper from the 2020 to 2022 in color Designer Series paper pack. And actually, I very wisely cut this to three inches by six inches. So I basically took this piece of Designer Series paper and chopped it right in half and basically was able to use it to make two cards. So all right, so let's get um, going here and stick this together, and hopefully I'll stick it on here straight and where I want it to be. All right, I think I did it, hopefully. I think I got it even with the bottom. <laughs> All right, um, next up, I did, again, a little of the die cutting ahead of time so you didn't have to sit and watch me do all that. So uh, Jamie's laughing, and uh, hey, Akiko's here. I don't know if I said hello if I haven't, so thanks for joining. So, um, All right, so I did a little die cutting ahead of the time these are cut from misty moonlight cardstock and again these were cut just with the meadow dies um, just basic die cut running it through the die cutting machine and we're going to adhere them onto the card front with just a little bit of liquid glue and it doesn't need a whole lot because we're going to layer things over the top of it so it doesn't need to be stuck down with huge amounts of glue that you know it's going to hold it forever and ever because we're going to stick things over the top of it so nobody's gonna you know they won't come off they won't come loose so all right so let's stick this down Hopefully I'm getting it remotely close to where I had the first one, the original one I put together. And then I've got the other flower die cut that I did here and just doing a little bit of liquid glue on the back of that as well. Um, again, all the details are going to be posted for this on my blog tomorrow, which is stampwithamyk.com, and I will share a link to the blog post in uh, this video once the blog post goes live tomorrow morning around 8 o'clock Eastern time. Um, so you can check out all the details there and, um, again, if you want to see, you know, how I made anything, I'll do a printable PDF tutorial as well. So if you would rather, um, watch it or rather, um, see it in writing than listen to me ramble on, then <laughs> you can do that too. All right. So the stamping part of it, I used gray granite ink and I've got the flower, uh, image here from the quiet meadow stamp set all set up and ready to go. Thanks, Melinda. I appreciate that. And, uh. Love Misty Moonlight, yeah, it's a good color. Hey, Meryl, thanks for joining. I'm glad you were able to hop in as well. And Debbie, thanks for hopping in as well. And good to see you guys, and hopefully you're having a good day. All right, we're gonna stamp this. I've got just, again, just a piece of basic white cardstock. Um, I don't know that I have any specific size on it. I think I just, it was a four by five and a quarter panel. I think I just chopped it in half. Um, I'm stamping it down a little bit from the top because um, my tag isn't gonna go way, way up to the top. Um, so I don't care about this because this is going to be chopped off at the bottom anyway, so I don't care exactly where the placement is on that. All right, let me grab, um, put away my glue before I end up with a glue disaster and grab a couple of Stampin' Blends markers. I've got So Saffron Light and Dark that we're going to be coloring the flowers with. And again, this isn't, you know, like super intense coloring um, because they're little images and, you know, that's, just not the way I color. I'm sure that I could spend hours and hours coloring them, um, but they probably wouldn't look any better because I'm not really good at coloring. <laughs> so I just get the color on the flowers, um, starting with the light, so saffron, and then I'm gonna come back in in a second and add just a few little um, low lights with the dark, so saffron. Um, all right, let me get this finished out here. And if you have questions about my double running shoe reward points bonus, let me know. Um, but that, again, is going on through July 2nd, which is Saturday, I think. I don't even know for sure what day of the week we're on. The summer vacation thing or summer break thing with the kids, I never know what day is what. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate y'all joining a little early today. The kids have dentist appointments this afternoon, so I know um, they're really thrilled about that. Yay, as always. Uh, going to the dentist is always tons of fun, but... Usually they do pretty well, so <laughs> they can't complain too much. No cavities normally. So, but yep, we'll be headed out to the dentist this afternoon. And um, like I said, I think Friday I'll be back at my usual time um, on YouTube Live at 2 o'clock Eastern. But uh, if anything changes in between here and there, I'll definitely let you know. 
Um, and again, I'm just coming back in just to blend in the colors a little bit with my light so saffron. So blending a little bit in the dark. So yeah, the blends really do help us all look like we know how to color. Although sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I make a mess. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the dentists are nice people, but nobody likes to visit them. <laughs> So then I've got uh, light and dark, soft succulent um, Stampin' Blends that I'm going to be coloring the stems with. And I'm going to use the bullet points. Normally I use the brush, brush ends of the blends. Um, I don't know. I feel like they color a little bit nicer. But when you're doing these little skinny stems like this, it's hard to keep them in the lines with the brush ends. I, I have a hard time even with the bullet ends because... You know my hands shake and I, again i'm not really great at coloring somebody who's really good at coloring i'm sure has no trouble at all keeping them in the uh the lines but i'm just kind of a sloppy color so all right so let's get the stems done here and again i'm starting with the light soft succulent I had to double check that for a minute because for whatever reason i always have that second when i'm coloring going did i grab the right marker but yep usually i try to um, the caps help me sometimes, but sometimes I just don't pay enough attention and then I grab the wrong one and then I'm, you know, frantically trying to use the color lifter to pick up some of the color on it, which does work. Um, I'm so happy we have that as a little bonus tool in the coloring, um, you know, in with the markers. The color lifter has saved me from many, many things that I have would have had to toss because I screwed things up. <laughs> so, and it also helps when you um, color out of the lines like I'm doing a little bit right here. Um, it helps you to be able to push those colors right back in the lines and nobody can tell that you made a mess when you were coloring. So another little bonus. And again, I'm just coming back in here with a little bit of dark soft succulent. And I apologize if y'all are leaving uh, comments. I can't see a whole lot because I'm trying to keep my eyes on my coloring because I tend to make enough of a mess when I'm watching what I'm doing, <laughs> much less than I'm trying to watch your comments. So um, did I stamp the flower in black? No, I did not, Catherine. I stamped it in gray granite ink, actually. So it's a little lighter. Um, I just wanted a little, I don't know, it's a little different look. And the one nice thing is that you can use our regular um, stamping, the um, classic Stampin' ink pads uh, with the Stampin' blends. There's some of the colors, um, some of the darker markers pick up a little bit of the color, um, but for the most part, you're able to use them uh, together because they're opposites. The um, Stampin', the regular classic inks are actually water-based and the markers are alcohol-based, so they kind of repel each other, if that makes sense, so you're able to use them together. Uh, last thing we've got here is Calypso Coral on the center of the little flowers. And I'm starting with the light, and I'll just come back in and add a little dab of dark. So, I it depends. Sometimes, you know, I just like the lighter color with it. Sometimes the darker I like better. It just depends on what I'm doing and kind of how I want it to look. So, all right. So, I think we will call that good for coloring today. Um, it is a good, it's a good set for all sorts of things, Meryl. You definitely, it's a good one. So, all right, next up, we're going to do a little die cutting um, with the TaylorMade Tags dies. And I think I'm going to go ahead and run it through just like this. That's why I stamped it kind of where I did so I could move the tag around. I could go like this, I can go like that, but I think I'm going to kind of go with it looking like that. I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine, which is right over here to my right. So hang on a second, I'll be off screen. And hopefully getting my tag cut. And I set up my little die cutting machine off to the side because um, I wiggle the table too much if I have it on the table with me <laughs> and then y'all get seasick. I do it bad enough normally. So, all right, so there's our tag. Um, next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab my, um, I almost call it Smoky Slate, gray granite ink pad again. And this is the kind of splattery image from the Quiet Meadow stamp set. And we're just gonna ink that up in gray granite ink stamp it over here on my grid paper and then stamp it kind of randomly around the edges of the flowers. And we'll tuck that one in there. Yep, and I think we'll call that good. All right. Next up is my, um, or I'm gonna show you how I did the little kind of lengthening of the tags. <laughs> So what I did was I got done with this and I started putting it together on my card and I have 
pre-cut this one as well. So I started to put it together on my card and then went, you know, these look a little short to me for the length of the card. So I was trying to figure out, well, could I, you know, should I redo it all? Should I whatever? So then I went, you know what? I can cut a little, little piece of designer series paper. And this is soft succulent from the 2021 to 2023 in color pack. And I just took my, that same tag die and cut a piece, a strip about three quarters of an inch wide and just ran it through my die cutting machine at the bottom end. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, slide that right up underneath here, stick it together and then cover it up with a little bit of gold foil and nobody can tell that there's a seam there on your tag. So I thought that was kind of a fun little trick and something definitely, you know, that I do often with tags because I don't know, for whatever reason, sometimes they're too, too short and I just wanted to be a little bit longer. So I'm um, gonna take a little bit of the multi-purpose liquid glue. The only sort of difficult part about it is trying to get the little addition on the tag adhered straight. Um, it's not terribly difficult, but it's just one of those things where you kind of have to make sure you're, you're sticking it on fairly straight. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. Nothing in card making ever does, um, but you don't want it to be all crazy and wonky looking. So, so that's it. And that extends out the tag a little bit. I'm going to give that one a second to dry while I adhere this one together before I go and start sticking um, the little gold foil on the um, other or on the uh, main tag. So uh, again, this is cut from So Saffron cards cardstock, So Saffron Designer Series paper from the Subtles Designer Series paper pack. So I use all of pretty much the six by six designer paper packs. And I tried to kind of mix up the patterns a little bit and try not to have all of them be the same. So I have one pattern here, one here, one here, and one here. So they're all different patterns from that same pack, those same family packs of paper. All right, um, next up, I've got a little eighth inch wide strip of gold foil sheets that I cut, and I'm just gonna place that right over the top of the seam here. So again, this is one of those where you need to be a little careful on your gluing and just make sure you don't get too heavy handed with it, which I'm trying not to, but I can't get the glue to come, there it goes. Say, of course, the glue's not wanting to come out, so it's probably gonna come out in a big blob, <laughs> but trying not to have that happen. And then we're just gonna stick this here and I'm gonna trim up the edge as soon as I have this all adhered down. Um, for me, it's a little easier when I'm doing these kinds of things where it's a little tiny strip like this that I'm adding to have it be a little bit longer because you can always trim it down, but if you cut it a little short, it's a little hard to add on. So, all right, uh, let me flip this over here and we will snip this off. And that's it for the two tags. Oh, nope, there's one more piece for the tag. Sorry, I forgot. I had cut, um, I, I'm calling, I don't know, they're re reinforcers or tag toppers or whatever you want to call it. I did cut one of these from gray granite cardstock and we're going to stick that right up here on the top of the tag with a little bit of the liquid glue. Again, try not to get too heavy handed on it. Um, these, the little reinforcement pieces, it is a little weird how they fit because I don't know, for whatever reason, I you would think that the rounded part would go to the top, but it does not. The flat part goes to the top. So when you're putting them on, just make sure you put the flat part to the top. It all lines up. And maybe that makes perfect sense to everyone else, but you know, sometimes in Amy's world, uh, things don't always work like they should. For instance, um, you know, the little piece, ears of corn <laughs> instead of being flower centers. So yes, that's what, that's what they are. They're not ears of corn like Amy thought. They're, they're flower centers after all. All right, so we've got our tags all put together. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to layer them together. The only thing I need to make sure is that I get the holes reasonably lined up because I'm going to be adding a little bit of linen thread through the hole. And I'm just going to adhere these together. I'm going to put a little bit of stamp and seal, maybe. <laughs> oh, I've got my other stamp. I'm like, why isn't this working? Oh, because it's a brand new stamp and seal. <laughs> I've got another one laying over here that I should have grabbed. All right, so I'm gonna line these up again so that making sure that the holes are lined up at the top and that they're a little bit offset from each other. And you will note this one does not have the gold foil on it, but we are gonna cover that with a sentiment in just a second. So it will, um, nobody will be able to tell that you didn't put gold foil on there. All right, got a little linen thread and we're gonna tie that through the top of the tag. And hopefully it'll be a simple bow. Uh, I didn't do anything too extravagant with this. Just tied it, basic basic bow with linen thread, maybe. 
as she says, as she fumbles through tying a basic bow with linen thread. Um, I usually start all of my bows, particularly when I'm using the, the thinner materials like this, with a knot because that holds everything in place. And then I'm not trying to hold things down with my finger while I'm, you know, trying to make the bows and trying to make them look pretty. Um, so I usually start with a knot and then um, make the bow from there. And again, because it's thin, thinner material, nobody can tell that it's um, got a knot underneath it anyway. So, all right, next up, we are going to adhere this. Um, to the uh, card front with a couple of Stampin' Dimensionals. And um, if you've watched my videos before, you know that I chopped my Stampin' Dimensionals in half. Um, so, yep, I like the way that they work better. Um, and, you know, the half ones stick just as well as the whole ones do. So, oh, good. I'm glad that uh, tip for lengthening the tags works because I do it fairly often, actually. <laughs> so, I don't know why. I guess I'm just a tag snob and I like them to be a certain length. And when they're not, then I don't, I'm unhappy. <laughs> So, all right, so let's get that adhered to the card front. And uh, second to the last piece is doing a little stamping on uh, of the sentiment. And we are going to do that. Um, it's, again, the sentiment is from the Quiet Meadow stamp set. And I've got Versamark ink, and we're going to do a little heat embossing. And I'm stamping it on Calypso Coral cardstock. And just going to stick it down here. Hopefully I got a good image on there. It looks like I did. And I've got white embossing, embossing powder, not powder, embossing powder from the Basics Embossing Powder um, set, which has got white, clear, and black in it. Um, so if you don't have those colors, you definitely need to get some because they're it's a really useful pack of embossing powders. All right, we're going to turn on the um, Stampin' Up! Heat Tool here. Um, Stampin' Up's heat tool has two settings on it. There's a level one setting and that's for drying. So if you do things like watercoloring um, or something where the ink stays wet a little bit longer and you want to hurry it up, you can use level one setting for drying. Level two setting is for heat embossing. So it gets a little bit hotter um, and it'll melt the, the uh, embossing powders. So just letting it heat up a little bit here. And once it starts turning that bright white, then you know that the embossing is done. And you don't want to overcook your embossing powder, which you can do, and I have done many times. Uh, where are my dyes? Oh, there they are. I lost, lost the die set already. Um, so we are going to use this um, die to actually cut out the sentiment, and then I just snipped the scallops off the end of it because um, I thought the scallop, again, I'll show you when I put the card front together, but I thought the scallops were too big for the card front. So I'm going to go run this through my die cutting machine quickly. Hey, Melanie, I'm alive a little bit early today, so the kids have dentist appointments this afternoon, so I had to hop on earlier than I normally do, so that's why I'm here, and uh, not, not after lunch like I usually do. All right, so let me get this. This would be helpful if I ran it through the machine straight so my back didn't, or my plates didn't get smashed. All right, so here's my die cut sentiment. And again, when I put it on the card front, I thought it was, I don't know, I thought it was too big and too much. And, you know, so I, I decided I was gonna trim it down. <laughs> now, if you like the look of it, there's nothing wrong with it. It was just my personal preference. I thought it looked, I don't know, I thought it was too much with the scallops on it. So I took it and just took my paper snips and my very fancy um, snipping abilities. I just chopped the scallops off. <laughs> So, so, um, so that's it. Again, that's about the extent of my fussy cutting skills. Um, those of you that know me again know that is not fussy cutting is not my thing. <laughs> I don't do it well. Um, yeah, I generally tend to make a mess and chop things off that I shouldn't chop off. And anyway, um, so I've got a little stamp and dimensional that I've put under half of it because my tags are actually under or have stamp and dimensionals under them. So I want this side to be raised, and this side I'm using stamp and seal to adhere it to the card front. And again, I'm just making sure that I have got my little seam in the over here on the tag that I didn't cover with the gold foil, covered with the sentiment. And hopefully I'm getting it stuck on here straight. All right, we will stick that down and I think we'll call that good. Um, the last piece that I've got here are some gilded gems and I'm gonna stick those around the um, sentiment and the card front here, just sort of randomly place them one of the small ones, one of the medium ones, and then one of the large ones I'll stick over here. 
as well. And that's it for the card front. So, oh, I should probably trim these down. Well, I don't know, they're not too, too bad. Maybe I'll trim these down just a little. I feel like the, the maybe I'll trim it. Okay, see, that happens. I should have just left it. There we go. <laughs> I'm like, why is this not cutting? I know, I know Karen is over there saying, you need your, you know, a better pair of scissors for ribbon than I do. <laughs> All right, so that's it for the card front. Um, no, I do not fussy cut well, Leanne. I am beyond terrible at it. <laughs> it stresses me out to no end. I know some people are like, it's so relaxing to cut stuff. I just get like, ugh, I don't know. My hands start shaking, and then I end up chopping the stem off of something I didn't want to chop off, and then, I, ugh, it just doesn't ever go well when I try fussy cutting. <laughs> so, all right, so the inside of the card I kept pretty simple. Um, just got gray granite ink again. And I'm inking up the flower image, and I'm just going to stamp it kind of over the edge of my um, four inch by five and a quarter inch panel of basic white cardstock. And then we're going to adhere that to the inside, and it'll be all done. Oh, see, I don't know. I, well, I have kind of bad eyes. I've always worn glasses. Well, since the third grade, I've worn glasses, but I can't even blame it on that because there are other things that I can do well and see well. I just can't. Fussy cutting is just... Ugh, it's like I said, it just stresses me out. So um, I do anything that I can to avoid fussy cutting because it's, it's just never pretty when I get done. All right, we're going to take a little stamp and seal to adhere this to the inside of the card base, and that's it. So it's all done on the inside. Going to fold it, use my bone folder to crease the top here really well. And that's it for my card today. And I have dimensional backs stuck all over me. So, all right, so this is the one that I did ahead of time. Um, this is the one we did here today on camera. Hopefully you'll like it. And definitely you need to um, need to get the stamp set bundle if you don't have it. It's really awesome. I love the dies. Love, love, love the dies. Um, and oh, you know what? There actually is one other thing I totally forgot. Ah, Winkostella. And I'm sure you probably can't see it at all on the flowers. I did put a little Winkostella on them because again, I thought it needed just a little bit of something, something on it um, to make it a little more sparkly. So I just did Winkostella over the, the um, flowers and I totally forgot to do it until I just looked at my card and I'm like, oh, I'm missing that. <laughs> so I even set the Winkostella like right up here next to where I'm working at so I wouldn't forget and I still almost forgot. But all right. There we go, now it's done. <laughs> so, all right, so thanks for hanging in there with me today. I appreciate y'all being here. Um, again, definitely consider getting the stamp set bundle. Um, if you are gonna put it in an order through me, make sure you get it done by the 2nd of July so I can get you double points on it. So all orders of 50 or greater get double points. And then don't forget the um, retiring items from Stampin' Up are ending tomorrow on June 30th. Uh, so anything out of the January to June catalog if that you don't have yet, that you want, get on getting it. And then the Designer Series Paper Starts on, uh, Designer Series Paper Star Sale starts on Thursday. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so again, uh, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate you being here. Have a great rest of your day, and we will chat soon.